Hello. So in the three years between 1999 and 2002, the amount of new recorded information was equal to all recorded information in the 5,000 years leading up to 1999. By now, recorded information doubles every year. And yet we still have an education system that privileges that we all learn the same set of facts. We have an education system that was designed in the 19th century by the same man who designed the assembly line, where we measure success, what we call academic achievement, on the basis of how well students perform on standardized tests under time pressure. We have research now to support what anyone who's been through school knows, which is you don't learn things best for keeps by memorizing and regurgitating. We also have research now to support what anyone who's been teaching and paying attention knows, which is ev everyone's different, and, and everyone's interested in different things, and everyone learns differently we have to find an entirely different method to do school. I spent the first 15 years of my career as an engineer turned tech entrepreneur in the early days of tech. I built with a handful of others a business that became a very successful large software business. Back then, it, it wasn't about changing technology. It was about getting businesses to adopt technology. We didn't use the word disruption, but that's what was happening. We didn't use so much the word innovation, but that's what we were having to do. And what I learned that mattered more than anything else to being successful at anything was what mattered most was who I had on my team and how well I worked with them and they worked with each other. And there was no manual for what we were doing. So I learned to, to problem solve and create solutions by experimenting. You had to start by understanding what it is actually you were hoping to accomplish. That was the most important thing. You got to understand what is it we're trying to do. And then you'd construct a smart experiment. I call them pilots. And a lot of people do, but I'm like the pilot queen. So that's the word I use all the time. You create a pilot and you test and you observe and what you're mostly observing for is the impact on that thing you decided matters most that you're trying to accomplish and then you'd go back and maybe you'd tweak some things or maybe you'd just go back to the drawing board so the business got really big and it got global and I was gone all the time and we also had two young kids at home and it became impossible to balance so I decided to make a lifestyle change I'd always wanted to teach so I found myself going from one day running a large software business to a few days later standing in front of a room full of 14-year-olds <laughs> who had failed their math class the year before as their high school math teacher. When I looked at what we were teaching and how we were teaching it, I was absolutely horrified. When he looked at the sea of faces, including Jeremy in the back, who five minutes in asked me, why do I have to learn this stuff? I knew that the start was I had to get each and every kid interested. And they were all going to get interested by different things, but I had to find a way to make it relevant. And then once I did, once I figured out how to do that, I did what came naturally. I experimented. And my experiment as I was building methods, create, start trying to create methods for how to get the learning to happen, my goal, I knew that if every one of them could get better at learning how to learn, then they'd be able to learn this stuff. So that's what I was watching as I was experimenting, the impact. Okay, did that work? Is he better at being able to learn how to learn really hard stuff? Is she getting better? And I create, I developed these methods that turned out to be very radically different methods of teaching. I taught hundreds and hundreds of students 
in math classes for 16 years with extraordinary results. Kids go going from failing math classes and coming out of the class and raising their hand to dive into honors math classes and thriving. But I wanted to take it to the next level. I wanted to create my methods with students learning everything by working on real problems on teams. So six years ago, I created an entrepreneurship class as a laboratory. I found real businesses with real and urgent startup problems. It could be, by the way, uh, a, a, a chicken store down the street, it could be a dry cleaner, or it could be a science-based business, and the learning objectives were all different, and the learning itself was all different, and I put um, I found businesses who were willing to let, had real problems and were uh, startup problems and were willing to let a bunch of high school kids work on them. So I'll give you an example. Uh, take the students, they've been in school uh, forever in regular classes, they're high school kids. There's a woman who creates a new water filter and designed to mimic the filter of the manta ray. It's really pretty special, it's working well, and she needs, she started a business, and she gives my students the challenge that's the biggest one for her. What market and what application should endemic solutions go after first? Why and how? So these students, many of whom never got above a C on a sci in a science class, who've had no experience outside of school, put them on teams, and they know this is a real problem for a real person who's not my parent and not my teacher, and three weeks later, we're gonna present our solutions to her, and it's real and it matters, and she's gonna listen to us. And when they present, they all present different things, and they've all learned different things. But they had to learn a lot of science. They had to learn about different kinds of water filtration and purification processes. They had to learn about infectious diseases. They had to learn about water access in developing nations and the impediments caused by culture and infrastructure. And they had to learn about data-driven decision-making. And so as I experimented with all these different students and all kinds of different problems and all kinds of different things, I developed methods. I developed methods for students to learn things that we really don't do well in school. We don't teach well in school. They learned through these methods creative problem solving, critical thinking, collaboration, communications. And it wasn't about just throw them a problem at them, step back three weeks later, have them present. This is really hard. And there's method. And it's highly developed and it's structured and it's teaching. It's just entirely different. So I knew that I had to show this method would work in what schools consider a core academic subject. So I went to my humanities department and they have a ninth grade required humanities course that the kids hate. And I asked them to, they hate it. And I asked the teachers and I wanted other teachers to implement my methods in this class. And I asked the department chair, okay, what's the unit in this class that the kids hate the most? Oh, that's easy, ancient Chinese history. Okay, how long is it? Three weeks, perfect. So instead of giving these kids the text from the year before, having them write a bunch of papers and do, and, um, do a test, we had the 14-year-olds do research and pitch to their, to their other classmates a contemporary Chinese problem they wanted to solve. So one example is the kid who, in about two minutes of, of searching, found out that in China, the government doesn't let you use Snapchat. That is a big problem. So uh, it's a big problem. And of course, he was one of the ones who was big time voted in. So that when their team presented their solution to a local university professor who had some related subject matter expertise in China, they started their presentation with what they uncovered when they started researching to see why. Why does the government not let people use Snapchat? And they had to keep digging and digging and digging until they finally got to 200 BCE in the Qin Dynasty, where the legalist rulers were the ones to start the tradition in China of censorship. So these kids didn't come out of the three-week unit well-educated in Chinese history, 
but I guarantee they came out of it understanding, whoa, turns out ancient Chinese history is not so bad, and actually history is kind of relevant. So four years ago, a man named Steve Blank saw what I was doing and pushed me to do a workshop in his living room, actually, to teach other teachers from other schools to build their own programs using my methods. And we had 30 people. They were educators from all over the country. And people weren't teaching entrepreneurship in schools. So these were math teachers, science teachers, history teachers first grade teachers, middle school teachers, high school teachers. And I learned two things. One, I learned that there are other teachers who really want to do things differently too. And second, I learned I can teach it to them. So that was four years ago. In the time since, I've been working with educators all over the country and all over the world, public school teachers, charter school teachers, teachers from Kazakhstan and Slovenia. Um, let me give you a local example here in Columbus. There's a school where if you get expelled from a school in Columbus, you go to this school. And these kids are the unluckiest of the unlucky. They end up a statistic. We, I trained the teachers. Um, they took the kids on the first day they got there on a bus to a local fast casual restaurant where the CEO met them. Um, it's a fast casual restaurant that sells spicy chicken and employs people who've been previously incarcerated. He gave them, you've heard, right? He gives them their challenge and this challenge is we're opening our second restaurant. I need a marketing plan for how to get customers and employees to this restaurant. The students leave, they're put on teams and they learn to research, they learn to problem solve, they learn to collaborate, and when three and a half weeks later, they present their solutions to a room of 65 adults, their creative evidence-based solutions. In the room are the hearing officers who a month earlier had met with them when they were expelled. All, all of the students who completed this pilot, this three and a half week course, ended up substantially improving their grades. Two of them applied and were accepted to elite academic programs. This was many months ago, and none of them have had a single academic infraction since. Why? Why? Um, okay, think about why it's actually exciting and at the same time a little sad that a three and a half week program like that can accomplish that. And the reason is, it's the first time ever that these students have been able to be themselves and, 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 and be empowered by, by realizing their own ability to create and learn. So I actually believe, I actually believe that education is the path to world peace, but our schools aren't doing the job. I have the joy and the privilege of working with teachers now all over the world. And the thing they all have in common is they all chose kids as their life's work. The problem isn't the teachers, it's the system. We need to shatter the goal of sameness. We need to get rid of the 19th century model and all the methods that come with it. And when instead we make the goal that school's about teaching students how to learn different things in their own unique, different ways, then we will create an education system that prepares students to thrive in this century and in any century. Thank you.